Hey guys, it's Rosie. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be telling you some of my top homeschool and online school tips. Um, first, I'm going to give a little backstory on um, my credibility as a homeschooler slash online schooler. So um, in 2018, I took one full year math class and then I actually really liked the online school. So I ended up uh, leaving public school and doing the second semester of the year um, online and from the road. So that was super fun and I really enjoyed it. Um, and then this past year, I took another full year math class and then, um, of course, quarantine happened, so I was online there, but I definitely didn't like the public school's online environment. I much prefer um, a real, like, online school that's meant to be an online school because they really, I think they do a better job um, of teaching. So now, um, I'm starting the next school year already. I started it a few weeks ago, even though it's July. I wanted to get a head start, so I'm taking five classes right now, um, but I'm going to take another math class once I finish the one that I'm um, on now, and then I'm going to take a writing class later, and I'm also going to take a Spanish class, but I'll be taking that from a college um, course because I don't find that online schools do a very good job of teaching languages. Um, colleges tend to have a lot better of an immersive kind of um, interactive course for languages. So that's my story. Um, I'm embarking on a full year of online school now. Um, I'm super excited for it. Um, the reason that my parents were on board with this was because um, regular school, like public school, isn't going to be normal this year um, because of the coronavirus. So I wanted to um, take this opportunity to try to travel and just go out of my comfort zone, um, try something new. So I'm very excited for this year to start. And also because I'm starting in July, I am uh, on track to finish in March. So that'll be super fun to have the whole spring and summer off before my junior year. Super excited for that. But let's get into my tips. So I have five tips with a bunch of mini tips below them. So five categories, I guess. So let's start with the first one, which is have a routine. I find this is very important to keep me sane and motivated. Um, so I think one of the most important things that I do is I pick one day that I do one or two classes and it's basically the same every week. So I know like on Monday, let's say I do like chemistry and world history and then the next day I'll do another two. And then since I only have five courses, the next day I'll do one and then like catch up on something I didn't finish. So I really like having that sort of structure where I know what I'm going to be doing each day of the week. Only picking one class and focusing on it helps me get more into it and getting more done, stuff like that. Also, find out um, what time of day is most productive for you. I find that when I get up right early in the morning and I work for three or four hours, then I have the rest of the day free to do whatever I want. I find that that works best for me. But I don't know, maybe you work best um, after dinner or I'm not sure, but find that for you. I find that it's really helpful to keep me um, engaged in my work. I'm not getting distracted and I'm able to just work, focus, and then later on I can do whatever else I want to do. So the next tip is to print out your pace chart. Um, and there's a lot of mini tips under this, but I just printed mine out here, which I will show you in a second. Um, but it's really important to know how many assignments you have to complete every week. That way you're staying on schedule and you're going to finish when you um, want to. Like I'm going to finish in March if I stay to my pace chart, which hopefully I will be able to do. Um, also to set daily, monthly, and um, like weekly goals also to motivate yourself. It's really nice to um, set a goal like today I'm going to complete three assignments in my math class and two in history. So if I set that goal and I reach that goal, it makes me feel great that I'm doing a good job with my courses. I'm staying on top of things 
And also it's great to reward yourself once you complete those goals. Like I like to have a yummy treat ready for myself. So um, the other day I was doing school and it was taking a long time and I was kind of annoyed. But I had set this goal that I was going to finish these two assignments. So when I was done I got to have a cinnamon roll. So that was really nice. It made me happy and it keeps me motivated the next day that I know that I'll have something for myself when I finish up with my schoolwork. Also, um, color code each class to stay organized. So like, I've got five classes. I only have four of the piece charts printed out here. So here they all are. And then once I finish each assignment, I just cross it off. And once I finish a page of each piece chart, then I get to recycle it and that makes me very happy to recycle a page because it means I've completed like a fifth of the course. Pretty sure there's five or six pages in each of these. So this is one I definitely recommend um, if you're doing an asynchronous course where you have a whole bunch of assignments laid out for you in the beginning and you can just complete them on your own time. If you're doing more of a homeschool kind of thing then it'll be a bit um, different than this but you can probably still lay out what kind of assignments you're going to be doing. Um, also, the next one um, is to listen to music while you work. This really helps me focus, um, keeps me really calm too, and it drowns out any outside noise. Um, like if you have pets or family members that are kind of loud, like my mom's on meetings often, and my dad's on meetings, and my brother, you know, comes in and out. So I think it's really nice to have some music on and headphones on, and just to drown out everything and focus on only school. And then when you're done, you can do whatever else you want. You don't have to, like, keep listening to it. But it's nice to just, it kind of gets you into the mood to do school. Also, if you have, like, a certain playlist that you listen to. Um, there are lots of, like, classical and relaxing playlists on the internet that I like to go through and listen to. And a lot of times I just end up picking, like, the same genre to, like I said, like, get myself into the mindset of school. Um, the next tip is to figure out what distracts you and stay away from it. Um, I know a lot of people get distracted by your phone, so um, my tip would be to put your phone on Do Not Disturb or leave it in another room where it's not going to tempt you and you can focus on your school and then talk to your friends later or go on TikTok later. <laughs> Whatever you want to do other than school, try to put it away and revisit it after you've um, gotten your goal done. Maybe your reward could be getting to go on TikTok for 30 minutes or whatever, something like that. Um, try to find a quiet place to work away from like pets and siblings, like I said. And when you can't work at home, like if you're just in a rut, you can't stay focused or get anything done, I would recommend going to your local library. Um, when we were on the road last year, um, while I was taking my half year off of public school, um, my mom and I went to the library almost every day to get her work done because she was working remotely plus my schoolwork. So we went there for like three or four hours a day. They have great Wi-Fi, it's quiet, um, just not really any distractions. So it's really nice to find a good library in your area. Um, and the last tip is to find online tools that can help you with your work. So because I've been doing school online for so long, I definitely have found a lot of tools that really help me. And if you have any other tools other than these ones I'm going to list, make sure to comment them down below because I would love to know what you guys are using and also I'm sure anybody watching this would want to hear some more great um, programs that you use. So my first one is the Desmos Graphing Calculator. I use this a lot for my algebra class because it's really nice to be able to actually see something. And I do have one of those graphing calculators, but I think it's so much easier just to like copy and paste an equation and put it into the graphing calculator and actually be able to see it on a big screen and not, you know, on the teeny little calculator screen. And I don't know, sometimes those are kind of hard to figure out how to use. So I prefer using Desmos. 
Also, Khan Academy is very helpful to me. Um, if I don't understand something, which is usually in math class, then I can just pop over there and search what kind of topic I'm doing, and a lot of times there's a whole bunch of videos um, right about that topic that will help me um, learn how to do it with great examples. So I really love going on there, and it helps me. Um, sometimes they have like examples that you can um, interact with to do, so that's really helpful. Um, also, Canva is one of my favorite tools. I use it almost every day in school projects because the school that I um, do online with has a lot of like um, create a graphic, um, make a poster, you know, kind of research projects like that. So I'm always having to design something. So Canva is a graphic design software that gives you all of these templates and you can just put your information into the templates and make it your own but it'll still be like aesthetically pleasing it can fit all your stuff and they have like a whole bunch of different sizes and like animations and stuff that you can put into them so it's really fun and super helpful just for um, people who have a lot of project work like I do um, also there are a lot of homeschool Facebook groups if you're not already in them um, my mom has been finding a lot of cool stuff for us to check out so definitely join those if you're not already in them um, and I just find that all Google apps are helpful for um, making presentations and writing out stuff so if you don't already use the Google apps which you probably do I'm guessing um, I would recommend them and the last one is to use EasyBib which is a bibliography making center to um, cite your sources because I know it's really important to not plagiarize especially when you're doing all of your work online it would be so easy to just plagiarize but it's really important that you are showing your teachers that you're responsible by um, copy and pasting all your links for all your pictures and sources and documents whatever you use to um, copy and paste it into EasyBib and it usually finds a lot of the information that needs to go into the citation so then all you have to do is just fix a few of them, then just hit cite and then it'll make a whole list, it already puts it in alphabetical order, then you just copy and paste it into a Google Doc or your project, and then just double space it, do the hanging and then everything like that. So it makes it super easy to be um, honest about your work and show that you are a responsible student. So. Those are all my tips. Let me know if you have any more tips um, in the comments below because I am all for improving my online school experience. So yeah, um, make sure to follow me on all social media at Rosie Revolts. Check out my Etsy shop also at Rosie Revolts to buy some of my custom necklaces. Um, and check out my book at getoutdoorsbook.com and I will see you guys later. Bye!